They did find each other via correspondence and form a truly close lifelong connection. You're absolutely right. And this is almost the best of all Jefferson stories. So they were friends. Then they were enemies around 1799 through 1804, let's say. Then they were frenemies, but they agreed. They Jefferson wins the election of 1800. He goes to see John Adams. They have a kind of a intense moment. Adams slams his fist down and says, you have put me out, Mr. Jefferson. You have put me out. And they never see each other again, ever. You know, it's an age of, of, of very weak transportation infrastructure, among other things. Adams goes back up to Quincy, Massachusetts, near Boston. Jefferson retires to Monticello. It looks like they're never going to communicate again. And neither one of them, neither one of them is willing to take that risk because so much has happened. And maybe mm -hmm. just let it go. But Benjamin Rush, the famous Benjamin Rush of Philadelphia, signer of the Declaration of Independence, the medical advisor to Lewis and Clark, and um, father of dream psychology in the United States, the hero of the yellow fever um, um, the crisis in Philadelphia in 1793, he decides he's going to reconcile them. So he writes to each one of them saying, you know, you should do this. And they keep resisting. And finally, he writes to each one, Jefferson's now retired, saying that the other one is eager for reconciliation. Oh, <laughs> so clever. with this ruse, he gets John Adams to write a letter. John Adams, on the first day of January 1812, writes this very, very, very tight and little careful letter to Jefferson, uh, sending him a book that his son had written. And Jefferson then responds with a very careful and wary response. And Adams warms up a little, and Jefferson warms up a little. And then suddenly, the sluice gates of their ancient love and affection open, and they exchange 144 letters during the last 14 years of their lives, and they are magnificent wow. letters. I urge you and everybody who hears this to, to get a copy. They exist in a number of forms and read the correspondence because it's thrilling. They talk about religion. They talk about Native Americans. They talk about the meaning of the American Revolution. They talk about Napoleon and they, the life of Jesus. They talk about uh, the origins wow. of, of, of Native American languages. They talk about their favorite Greek and Latin classics. Um, and they dispute a few things. Adam still wants to pick a few fights. But in his fifth or sixth letter, Adams writes to Jefferson and says, one of the great things ever written in a letter, he says, my friend, we must not die until we have explained ourselves to each other. And they did. And they died simultaneously, as you know, on the 4th of July, 1826. But the, the reconciliation is an amazing thing. And I have to say two things about it in closing. One is that Adams did the heavy lifting. Jefferson is like Muhammad Ali in Zaire, bobbing and weaving and avoiding conflict. Adams was the heavy lifter in this correspondence, and he wrote three or, three or so letters to every one that Jefferson wrote. And secondly, Adams loved Jefferson. So your rainbow metaphor is not so far away. He actually loved Jefferson. Jefferson esteemed John Adams, but Adams had a huge capacity for love, uh, and he was willing to overcome the deep bitterness he felt, and he was right about the way Jefferson had treated him in those difficult years. And so it ends beautifully. And that correspondence is, every time I'm depressed about this country, I read the Jefferson Adams correspondence and cheer up. Wow, I love all that. And I do want to read it. I've never read it. I, I, it'd be amazing if there was any sort of, anything close to a petty moment, like, can you believe George's hair? What's he doing? <laughs> I don't know how it would go. But just to there see were that petty they're human. Moments, and they were all from Adams. There were petty moments, and he went. Adams envied everybody. He he thought Washington was overrated. He thought Jefferson was overrated. He thought everybody was overrated because no one. He didn't get enough of you know. He didn't ever got what he, he he was like the Rodney Dangerfield of the of the founding generation. And when Paul yeah, Giamatti played playing. him in the miniseries, it was exactly right. So yeah, everyone petty. was overrated except for himself. And you know, and the one thing about Adams too that we know is he was anything but afraid of confrontation. So I'm not surprised to learn he was more in the lead on sending the correspondence and repairing the relationship. You know, there was nothing he was afraid to do. He was afraid to drive Jefferson away. That was the only oh. thing he was afraid of. And Jefferson, to, oh. to his credit, took some body blows in that correspondence. And, and chiefly, <laughs> chiefly, Adam said, you know what? I was right about the French Revolution. You were wrong. I knew you were wrong. You knew you were wrong. You were stubborn. You said it was going to end happily. It didn't. I want you to admit you were wrong. And Jefferson says, okay, okay. You know, you're right on that one. You are certainly right. <laughs>
That's a big one. <laughs> um, th- that's amazing. I do want to. Re- Is there one book that's got it all? You sort of have to piece it together through I've various got your correspondence. Your producer's or... address. I'm going to send you a copy, and you have to promise to read it. Okay, I will. I I look forward to reading it. Um, Good. and then they died. They not, died not only on the same day, but they died 50 years to the day from the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which is just. I mean, you got to believe in some sort of higher power. I don't know what the higher power is for any particular individual, but whether it's a combination of God, the American spirit, the Holy Spirit, there's something going on there. You know, Jefferson probably would disagree with you, but uh, but I won't. Um, so they died within four hours of each other. Adams was 91. Jefferson was 83. Jefferson died of wow. prostate cancer and a urinary tract infection. He was kind of come, starting to come apart. And Adams died of basically sheer old age. And uh, Jefferson died first. He died at, uh, at around noon on the 4th of July. He had been hanging on for a couple of days. He wanted to reach that milestone, as people often Aww. do. And his last words were, is it the 4th? He was coming in and out of a coma. And John Adams, then a few hours later up in Massachusetts, his wife is long since dead, uh, he died. And his last words, Megan, were, Thomas Jefferson still survives. He was wrong as always, but you can see that he couldn't (laughs) let it go, that Jefferson mattered to him. And I don't think that was said with envy. I think it was like Jefferson, you know, Uh, there was a a beauty in this. And then John Quincy Adams was president. And he said what you said. He said, this is no coincidence. This, this is surely the hand of, of, of Providence here. Short on gift ideas for people. Well, Not everyone wants the new iPhone 240, whatever number they're on. In fact, a hard economic year for most has caused essential gifts to be more needed and wanted than ever. Fortunately, you can easily give an essential gift this year, and that is delicious meat. Good Ranchers has gift boxes and gift cards so that you can give America's best meat and seafood this Christmas, and you should. With discounts on orders of five boxes or more, you can save on gifts for the whole family or your business. With 100% American, USDA Prime, and upper choice cuts of beef, chicken, and seafood, you are sure to beat out the new socks and re-gifted candles for the best gift of the year. Head on over to GoodRanchers.com. Use the code MEGAN, M-E-G-Y-N, at checkout for $35 off your delicious gift of meat. If you know someone that likes meat, then you know someone who's going to love Good Ranchers. Your gift goes farther with them because they take the premium price out of premium meats. Go to GoodRanchers.com and find the perfect box for you or a loved one in their curated selection of hand-trimmed meat and seafood. Give the best meat in America, support local U.S. farms, and get 35 bucks off your essential gift with my code, Megan, today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.